Hello, welcome to Weblink Science Brief. I am your host at Dusk108. I don't know why I closed my own eyes saying my name. So if you've been watching this, um, you should know I love science and I like talking about it, but I have about 150 science articles I have not even gotten to and it's August. I've been collecting them since June. So <laughs> we're gonna try and focus on more headlines per episode and save details for my blog on worldwithsoul.com. But I, love, I like talking about this stuff. So if you see or hear anything interesting and wanna talk more about it or learn more about it, follow the links below or comment, ask me, and I will gladly expand my own knowledge or do some more research for your sake in order for us to have a conversation about some of the very exciting and excellent discoveries in the scientific community that happen on a daily, weekly basis. And my light dot, that's awesome. This is a report from August 5th from David uh, Neild. And the first nuance of this that may sound familiar to some people is that it's very similar to Minority, <laughs> Minority Report. The movie with Tom Cruise, and yes, um, this is real life, but it's not as science fiction extravagant as that movie. They're just basically, without giving away their own secrets because they didn't detail exactly how it works, but it can be easily thought of as collecting data, which they already do, and using it to pretty much configure probability of events. That's a simple way to, to put it. So it's not too outrageous, it's, but it is intense to know that the Pentagon is working on that type of AI that can pretty much look at the, these massive data pools and create algorithms that's predicting uh, probable events. Next, we have from the New York Times, Scientists finish the human genome at last. So if anyone has been following news about genetics and advancements, you know, things that deal with diseases and understanding the human body and our physiology and yada, yada, yada. This is super huge news. They had announced it about, about 20 years ago when they had the initial draft of the human genome. And now here we are over two decades later, they've completed the the genome <laughs> they sequence the genome and it says two decades after the draft sequence of the human genome was unveiled to great fanfare a team of 99 scientists has finally deciphered the, the entire thing they have filled in vast gaps and corrected a long list of errors in previous versions giving us a new view of the dna this is huge news because this allows us to really understand genetic diseases closer and also find out more about our origins and how the body on a genetic level works. Next from geneticliteracyproject.org, we have African scientists have created a CRISPR edited banana that's resistant to a disease ravaging farms across the continent. This is also super huge news. If you don't already know, bananas are notoriously susceptible to diseases because they are all clones. In the past, varieties of banana have been driven virtually extinct by infectious diseases like Panama disease, and today, viruses, bacteria, and fungi again threaten the world's banana supply. So, we have variations in our produce, you know, in apples, you know, different types, Macintosh and um, Granny Smith. But bananas are predominantly one type, and that's danger, dangerous for genetic diversity, which, you know, makes them more susceptible, as they said in the article, to diseases. And it's nice to see that CRISPR is being used to help um, genetically engineer or modify our food resources that would probably go extinct um, if we ever encounter another year like 2020. From sciencealert.com, a common North American plant 
was just discovered to be secretly carnivorous. So this plant is the Trianthia occidentalis. Basically what's happening with this carnivorous plant is that in the wetlands of the west coast of North America, from Alaska to California, there lives a, there lives a herb-like plant that has just been discovered to have the occasional taste for flesh. So some quick details about this. Um, it uses its sticky stem to trap smaller insects and it pretty much ingests, ingests them for the sake of nitrogen. Plants that don't acquire certain nutrients in the soil have an adaptability trait which has evolved carnivorous plant species. This is unusual because it doesn't have all the characteristics of common carnivorous plant species, but nevertheless, it sometimes snacks on insects. About 65% of the nitrogen from this plant comes from insects. That was your science brief headlines. Hopefully you have learned something and you are inspired to do more research. If you are, all the links are below. Web link science briefs. Take care.